Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator George Mitchell. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your presence, for your warm reception, and most of all, for your continuing support for our scholarship program. There is a, some pleasure uh, in listening to these uh, uh, lavish introductions. There is also some risk. The risk that uh, if you hear it often enough, uh, you start to believe all of this stuff. And so uh, after that, uh, I'd like to tell a story that uh, describes how I was brought back to earth after I came back from Northern Ireland. I wrote a book about my experience. And uh, when it was published, I traveled around the country to promote sales of the book. I received literally hundreds of invitations to go to events. I couldn't accept them all. But in the course of it, I learned that in the United States, there are more Irish American organizations than there are Irish Americans. <laughs> uh, and I went around to several of them, and there developed an informal competition among them as to who could give the longest, the most exaggerated, as Joe Biden said, would have said the most malarkey invitation <laughs> uh, uh, that anybody could have heard. And I'm embarrassed to say that I began to start believing all this stuff. And when I got to the final stop of my book tour, it was at the Stamford, Connecticut Irish American Club. My head was so big that I could just barely squeeze it through the front door. And when I got inside, the first person I encountered was an elderly woman, rushed up to me, very excited, shook my hand vigorously, and said, I thrilled to meet you. She said, I don't live anywhere near here. I drove three hours just to shake your hand, to say hello, and to ask you to sign my poster because I think you're a really great man. And I said, well, of course, uh, I'll sign your poster. She handed it to me with a pen. And I looked at it, and I said, uh, I'll be happy to sign it. I said, but before I do, I think there's something I must tell you. She said, what is it? I said, I'm not Henry Kissinger. <laughs> the, uh, the poster was a big picture of Henry Kissinger, who, who, is, who she really thought was a great man. Uh, and she looked at me, surprised, and she said, you're not? She said, well, who are you anyway? When I told her, her face betrayed her disappointment, and she said, well, that's awful. She said, that's just terrible. She said, I drove three hours to meet Henry Kissinger, and all I've got is you. I said, well, I'm really sorry uh, that I'm not Henry Kissinger. I said, and that you're feeling so much pain. I wish there was something I could do to make you feel better. And after a brief pause, she said, well, there is. I said, what is it? She leaned forward toward me and in a conspiratorial low voice said, nobody will ever know the difference. <laughs> she said, would you mind signing Henry Kissinger's name on my poster? So I did. And somewhere up in northeastern Connecticut on the wall somewhere, there's a Big poster of Henry Kissinger with my signature of his name. <laughs> now, the best part of it is that just a couple of months ago, I appeared jointly at an event in New York with Henry Kissinger. Uh, and uh, we both spoke, and I told this story at the beginning. And then we both gave serious talks, and we answered questions. And I, I'd appeared with him several times before. And on the way out, he said to me, I have to tell you, he said, uh, I've been with you often. I've heard you speak often. He said, I've never heard you give a better speech than you gave tonight. And I said, really? 
I said, what part of it did you especially like? He said, well, that story that you told at the beginning. <laughs> he said, that was really good. You should tell that more often. <laughs> so I asked. And here I am, the non-Henry Kissinger back down to earth. Uh, I, I want to uh, uh, associate myself and repeat some of Mary's remarks, uh, particularly in the expressions of gratitude. First, to Tom uh, Walsh, who's here, and to Linda, his wife, and to all of the incredible staff here at the Marriott. Uh, please give all of them a round of applause. This is the 12th consecutive year uh, that they have, through their extraordinary generosity, made it possible for us to direct every dollar contributed here tonight directly to helping young people go to college in Maine. Tom, why don't you stand up again? Come on, I want to really, really get it. Not only that, uh, Tom is my foreign policy advisor with respect to Ireland. He doesn't get any credit on the screen. I don't talk too much about all the advice I got from him during the time, but he's a good Irishman. His father was an immigrant from Ireland. Uh, he taught me how to deal with those guys over there when I get there. Uh, I want to thank also the other sponsors, uh, TD Bank, Wright Express, two companies who've been just tremendous in their ongoing support for the scholarship program, and Linda Mitchell Price and Stuart Price. Linda's my niece. Uh, she and her husband, Stuart, have been major benefactors, and we're very, very grateful to them. Because of their ongoing support and that of many others, indeed all of you here this evening, as Mary said, we've been able to provide more than $9 million to more than 2,000 students. I want to add also that this annual dinner gives me another chance and a public opportunity to recognize and express my gratitude to our very hardworking staff led by Meg Baxter and our board of directors chaired by David Johnson. And I'd ask all of these members of the staff and to the board who are present to please stand and ladies and gentlemen join me in thanking them for their dedicated effort. There's nothing more important in life than family, uh, and my family, many of them are here tonight, have been uh, major supporters of this program from the very beginning. And I'd like to recognize and ask them to stand, my sister Barbara, my brother Paul and John, my sisters-in-law, Yvette, Pernella, and Janet, along with a whole bunch of nieces and nephews, uh, who I won't uh, uh, mention each by name, but would you all please stand and express the gratitude, uh, let me express my gratitude to you. Uh, we're honored to have uh, many distinguished uh, uh, officials here tonight, uh, and I'd like to introduce a few of them first. We're very much honored by Representative Shelley Pingree and her husband, Donald Sussman, We've taken time off from the campaign trail to come here. Shelley and Donald, would you please stand? Right. Also here is the Democratic leader of the Maine House of Representatives, now a candidate for U.S. Senate, Emily Kane. Emily is here. I can't see where you are. Emily, stand up. And, And although she hasn't yet been elected to anything, I do think we should recognize and pay special, a special tribute to Colleen Quint, who until this year headed this organization and did such a, Colleen, would you please stand? Uh, we also are very fortunate to have here this evening some college and university presidents and officials and each of the institutions of higher learning in Maine has been especially supportive of our program. We've developed a great working relationship with all of them. Uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to read off their names and ask them to stand 
and remain standing until they're all up and then give them one single round of applause, please. Bro Adams, the president of Kobe College and his wife Lauren are here. Uh, Susan Hunter, the provost at the University of Maine. Theo Calico, the president of USM here in Portland. Michael Stevenson, the provost at USM. And Jim Blugos and his wife Michelle, the newly inducted president of St. Joseph's College. Would you please join me in thanking all of them for their great work here. When I started this program, uh, at the time I retired from the Senate in 1995, I had two objectives. The first was to give something back, to help others in the many ways that I had been helped. And second, thinking about the future of this state that we all love so much, to do what I could to make sure that Maine has the educated workforce necessary for success in the 21st century. I wanted first to give something back because I felt that I had been the beneficiary of so much help from so many people here in Maine. As you heard in the video, my mother worked the night shift in textile mills in central Maine all of her adult life, and my father worked as a janitor at Colby College. They had little formal education, but they were determined to send all of their five children to college. They recognized that if we were to have better jobs and better lives than they had, we needed to get an education. But they couldn't afford to pay the cost of a college education. And that's when I learned firsthand the importance of scholarships, and the importance of a helping hand. Without those helping hands, I would not have been able to go to or graduate from college, and I certainly would not be where I am today. It was through the encouragement of my teachers, the kindness and generosity of many friends, and also from many people I didn't even know who just wanted to help. The assistance I got from Bowdoin and my own willingness to work, that I was able to earn a college degree and to start on the path that led me to the United States Senate and beyond. I created this program to enable every Maine youngster who can't otherwise get an education to have the same chance in life that I had. Our goal is high. We want every single boy and girl in Maine to be able to go as far and as high as their talent and their willingness to work will take them. And you heard from three young people tonight who demonstrate the qualities of these young people when they get a chance. And I want to say to you, as impressive as they were, they are truly representative of all of the scholars. We could have drawn out of a lottery of the 128 scholarship recipients this year, and you would have heard three equally impressive and compelling presentations. These are terrific young people who make me proud to be from Maine and make me proud to be supporting them to see with great confidence that they are going to contribute to this society, this state, their community, and their country. Now, we want that to happen to everybody. And I also want to have each of them to have the same expectations of hard work that I had. You've got to work to succeed in life. And you've got to develop a work ethic early in life. And in fact, our scholars do work hard. As Mary said, over 90% of them earn all A's and B's in college wherever they go, and they also work to give back to their communities. Just last year, our scholars performed more than 30,000 hours of community service here in Maine.
Now, my second objective. Every person in this room understands the link between an educated workforce and a vibrant economy. In the past, there are many men and women who have succeeded, reached the pinnacle of success in life with little or no education. And they're heartwarming stories. The one thing we can say with certainty that there will be fewer of them in the 21st century than before, and even fewer beyond. With the vast explosion in knowledge, with the dramatic information and technological revolution through which the human race is now passing, knowledge and skill will be more essential than ever to success in virtually every walk of life. And we know that more education means more income and a better life for the individual and a more robust economy for the state as a whole. The earnings of Maine workers today are, with a bachelor's degree, 50% higher than for those with only a high school diploma. And the unemployment rate is 50% lower. It's beyond dispute, and it's beyond doubt. Wherever you go in this state, in this country, or on this earth, higher level of education, on average, leads to a higher income. In Maine, demand for college-educated workers is projected to grow seven times faster than the demand for high school graduates. And I haven't even mentioned the thousands and thousands of members of our society who aren't able to get even a high school education. For them, unemployment rates are yet higher, and incomes are even lower. Now, right now, the proportion of Maine working adults with an associate degree or higher is well below the New England average. We have to do better. We're fortunate to have a high percentage of students who graduate from high school, but we have a very low percentage of students who go on to college, and an even lower percentage who graduate from college. Our research at the Institute shows that the factors that most affect access to college are the student's social and economic background and their academic preparation. And the research is very clear that these two characteristics are related. This year, nearly half of Maine students from kindergarten through high school have family incomes low enough to qualify for free or reduced price school lunches. And there is a 25 percentage point gap between those students and their classmates whose incomes are above that level in math. And math proficiency is a very strong indicator of college readiness and success. So investment in education will pay off for the individual students to lead better, more full, more meaningful, hopefully more productive lives, and for the whole society. We know from our research also that 70% of all of our scholars currently live and work in Maine, and fully 90% of them plan to do so within five years. These statistics demonstrate that they're making a difference for Maine, just as we are making a difference for them with your help. It's my great hope that over the next few years, we'll be able to increase the dollar amount of the scholarships that we provide, as Mary suggested, for the reasons she stated, to enable them to keep pace with inflation. When you think about it, the amount that we provide now is a relatively small proportion of a college education. The principal benefit is that it enables them to build a program of financial support at each institution for each of the students. To do all of that, we need your continued help and support. We have to keep college within reach of the many thousands of young Maine people who need help 
to get there and to graduate. They are the future leaders of our state and hopefully of our nation. To all of you for what you've done in behalf of this program, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I encourage you to do all you can to be of help. And if you're in doubt, don't think about what I said. Think about what these three young people here said tonight and how they do represent the high quality of the young people around this state who, when given a chance, when given a chance that they might not otherwise get, can rise to the top. Thank you again very much. Have a great evening.